This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. And good evening. Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. With me today is Mr. Richard Fields. Richard, we got a lot of uh, a lot of issues on docket today. RFK ended his presidential campaign the other day. He endorsed Trump, which I, I, I suppose the endorsement surprised me a little bit. I, you know, the dropping out doesn't surprise me. He's going to run out of money at some point. But the the endorsement of Trump surprised me. It doesn't surprise me he didn't endorse Kamala or that he took a, a what a broadside at the Democrat Party. That doesn't surprise me. But the Trump thing does surprise me a little bit. Well, yeah, you know, this is the guy that uh, was uh, you know teasing the Libertarian National Committee in the in much of the convention, along with Trump, I guess. But uh, you know, trying to get the Libertarian uh, nomination. I mean, he entered, he did all the paperwork to have his name entered in nomination. And uh, the honorable thing would have been for him to uh, drop out and endorse uh, the Libertarian candidate, candidate Chase Oliver. But that that didn't happen. So, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm sure he's got a, a bone to pick with the uh, with the Democrats who have uh, just almost uh, in a in unison done everything they can to diss him and uh, marginalize him and uh, keep him off the ballot. And, you, you know, they, they've been they've been vicious uh, in their uh, attack on RFK, uh, including his own family. So, you know, I don't know what that says about about RFK himself, he may he may have, well, he did deposit a dead bear in Central Park. That 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 you know, that that makes me raise you know I have questions about about his mental stability, shall we say? Uh, but you know what? Maybe uh, somebody with that degree of mental stability endorsing Trump isn't that much of a stretch after all. <laughs> well, I guess not, Richard. I just. I don't know. This this is one of these presidential elections that I can't get a thumb on, right? I can't get my thumb on the populace this this time on on the mood of the country. I just have no clue. Usually, I can get a pretty good clue by this. Well, time. no, it, it's a fifty fifty election. It could go either way, depending on who uh, really who who dep- who controls the polling booths. But. Uh, no, I mean, as far as the, the population is concerned, it's split. I, I say 50-50. That's really 30-30 with, you know, 40% of the population, you know, holding their nose to vote for one of them or just saying, I'm not going to vote or I'm going to vote for uh, Chase or I'm going to vote for some other third party. Nobody likes either Trump or Kamala other than their close family members and in Trump's case, not them. Yeah, it, it's it's crazy how... Everybody is now voting against the other guy. There's almost nobody voting for. But, of course, when they get into office, you know, they will run like the world voted for them. You know, you get 50% of the vote. Yeah. 60% of your 50% is against you, against the other guy more than they like you. But, yes, you're somehow going to run for office like you've got a mandate to do. You're, you're, yeah. But you don't. There's no yeah. mandate. Yeah. So, but what did Trump promise RFK? Right. The, the yeah, Trump yeah. Was, was the release of the documents, the assassination documents. Was that part of the deal? Well, I'm sure that has to have something to do with it. But, you know, a, tr- a promise from Trump. What's that worth? I mean, Trump promised to uh, end abortion, basically, uh, in 2016. Now he's a big champion for, for women's rights. And, uh, yeah, we put it down to the state level. But by God, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'll veto anything that outlaws abortion at the federal level. So his his word is worth nothing. He also promised to release the JFK assassination documents when he ran the first time. That didn't happen. He had four years to do it. He, for whatever reason, decided not to. And I suspect it's because the the deep state has, and by that I mean the security agencies, have a whole lot of uh, bones buried in those documents that they don't want unearthed. And my guess is that, yeah, he promised it, but I don't think happen yeah well i think this might be the time if he actually gets back reelected, he may actually release those just to get back at the deep state i think if there is a who knows who knows i mean there 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 is speculation that 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 trump is no safer than jfk was you know so (laughs) well (laughs) well we know that right we know that he's no safer than jfk was we've we've seen how 
you know, you don't even need to do anything yourself. You just need to let something happen. You just yeah. need to kind of not get in the way. And these kind of things can happen, right? What is it? Planned incompetence? Is that what it is? Yeah. I, well, talk about planned incompetence here. The Federal Reserve, Richard, has says we <laughs> may need to cut interest rate <laughs> by September to help jumpstart the economy that two months ago was the greatest economy ever. I don't know what these people are. What, what happened? I mean, I mean, okay. The Federal Reserve is always, by by definition, they're always wrong, because they're always trying to set the perfect interest rate, and the perfect interest rate is easily discovered in private markets. The interest rate is nothing more than the price of money, how much you have to spend to borrow money. That's all it is. Interest rates are nothing but a price. And we get we figure out the price of corn. We figure out the price of uh, Rice Krispies. We figure out the price of John Deere tractors without a federal agency dictating what that price is going to be. The same thing happens with money or should happen with money. The Federal Reserve will always get it wrong and they're getting it wrong now. But of course, the Federal Reserve is a non-political. They're apolitical, right? I mean, it's in their charter, and you know, they're they they'll talk ad infinitum about how unpolitical they are, and they lower interest rates two months before the election, and will probably goose the stock market. Already have actually just with the promise. Yeah, they're apolitical, right? Yeah, well, it's like the being, it's like having the, the mayor's office be nonpartisan, right? But we all know that the person is not, the person in the office isn't nonpartisan. The office may be nonpartisan, but the person in the office isn't going to be nonpartisan. No. And it's the same thing as, as the Federal Reserve. They're not nonpartisan. They have their own agendas, maybe. Maybe the agenda is to the deep state. Maybe the agenda is to big money. Maybe the agenda is to a political party. But these have their own agenda. And yeah, the agenda, the agenda of the of the Federal Reserve board members is to remain board members or get really juicy uh, investment banking uh, gigs after they're off the Federal Reserve board. That's it. Those are the two things that motivate those clowns. Well, you did talk about prices earlier here, Richard. Now, it brings up something that we didn't don't have on on the, the agenda. But, you know, we have more and more. Uh, California is wanting to, you know, set prices, be it wages, be it food, be it energy, whatever. There's more and more looking into, you know, setting prices. Now we've got Kamala Harris out there wanting to set housing prices, essentially, right? Well, no, she wants to subsidize housing prices with a gift to a home buyer, which will do nothing but raise the price of houses by another $25,000. That's all it'll do. Right. Then she wants, to, she wants to prevent price gouging by grocery stores with their 1% and 2% margins. Give me a break. A, yeah. if you try to set the price of groceries, the guaranteed eventual result is bare grocery shelves. All you have to do is look at the old Soviet Union, Venezuela, Zimbabwe, any place that has tried price controls ends up with a shortage of whatever uh, – the, whatever commodity they're trying to, uh, to uh, uh, control the price of. And that's oil during the 70s. Doesn't make any difference. Price controls simply uh, change the way that you uh, ration a commodity from price to ra to a uh, queue. You, you change it from a, from a price to a line. That's all That's all it does. No, you no, stand no. in line to buy. No, and it's crazy. And this, this thought process is extending. I heard on the other day that one of these... Uh, was it Charge America or Electrify America? One of these fast supercharging companies is they're going to limit your charging to 85%. You can't charge your car to 100% anymore because you're taking too much time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's, 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 that's queuing. Right. So because it takes a long time to go from that last 15%. So they're going to kick you off and charge you extra. And, and yeah, it's starting, Richard. It's starting where they're starting to limit our ability to operate and effectively function function but you mr fields we have a uh a report from the fields from you this week so let's see what richard has to say this week okay yeah this is richard fields with this week's report from the fields liberalism used to be a philosophy that espoused the protection of individual liberties and economic freedoms 
the early 20th century progressive movement and then Franklin Delano Roosevelt redefined liberal to exclude that economic freedom part. The word liberal was essentially stolen from actual liberals and used to describe the views of progressives, socialists, and eventually outright Marxists. Actual liberals had to coin a new term to describe their beliefs and philosophy. Thus, the term libertarian came into use to describe the beliefs of those of us who value both individual liberties and economic liberty. liberty. The palace coup that crowned Kamala Harris as the Democratic Party nominee for president has appropriated the word freedom and in doing so has changed its meaning. The germ of the idea started with FDR's 1941 State of the Union address, where he posited that there were four freedoms, freedom from uh, freedom of speech and expression, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. There are two kinds of freedom, actually, negative freedom and positive freedom. Negative freedom refers to what the government cannot take away from you or do to you your life, your right to express yourself, your right to associate with people of your own choosing, your right to defend yourself against forceful aggression, your right to keep honestly earned property, your right to worship as you please, essentially those rights enshrined in the Bill of Rights, plus private property rights, which they unfortunately left out, and personal control over reproductive rights. Positive freedom, on the other hand, refers to what the government can give you. FDR's freedom from want and fear. Government itself produces nothing. People produce things. Government therefore has nothing to give to those in want or in fear. Therefore, all it can actually do is tax, another word for steal, from the group of people deemed not to be needy or fearful, to give to the group of people deemed to be needy or fearful. The Democrats under Kamala's banner have completely reversed the meaning of freedom. They claim freedom of speech and expression for themselves exclusively. Under the Biden administration, which obviously includes Kamala as vice president, they have effectively denied free speech to anyone who disagrees with their preferred narrative. The censorship by coercion of social media on different narratives on COVID, the Hunter Biden laptop, climate change, the war in Ukraine, and many other issues is a 180 degree turn from FDR's freedom of speech and expression. And he was no, no uh, conservative. Their attempts to force woke lifestyle choices in all public institutions at the expense of traditional religious values negates freedom of worship. They're doubling down on FDR's positive freedoms of want and fear with crackpot ideas like price controls on food companies, which have profit margins of a whole one or two percent, and giving $25,000 to first-time home buyers, which will just increase the prices of homes by that amount. Those are examples of positive pr freedoms. Expressed in non-political language, they want to be the fences that transfer stolen goods from the rich, in quotes, who don't vote for them anyway, to the poor who do. The mantra of freedom from fear at being shot at is just a clever way of trying to make the fundamental right to self-defense a freedom instead of a gross violation of freedom. We're witnessing the prophecy of George Orwell in 1984, where freedom is slavery, Kamala is also all in on continuing to support Ukraine in their futile war against Russia. I guess Orwell's war is peace also applies. And if the voters, voters elect either Kamala or Trump, we'll have learned that ignorance is strength. That's this week's report from the fields. See you again next week. Anybody who is willing to reimagine the Second Amendment, reimagine its meaning, is willing to reimagine any part of the Constitution, yeah. right? Yeah. So if you're willing to reimagine what the Second Amendment means, you're willing to reimagine the First, the Fifth, the Tenth. The hell, you don't even pay attention to the Tenth. So, <laughs> I mean, they just ignore the Tenth Amendment. Yeah. So it's, it is kind of absurd.
So I agree with you there, Richard. I'm going to agree with you. And speaking of this, is actually kind of brings us on to the next topic here. We've got, could Elon Musk actually be arrested because of an X get canceled because of what his, his essentially it's Europe threatened Elon because of, oh, his interview with Trump. There we go. I can edit that out to make it sound better. <laughs> well, that, that and, and, and what's causing him trouble right now is uh, allegedly some uh, Islamic uh, or Middle Eastern, whatever, Islamic uh, religious people uh, killed, I think, three girls uh, or raped them. I forget exactly what the crime was in England. And they were arrested. And uh, the police were very reticent about giving any kind of uh, personal description of, about, about those, who, those, th who those people were. And people got up in arms about it. There's this anti-immigrationist, nativist uh, attitude in Britain, just like there is in this country. And people got really annoyed because uh, the, 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 the truth of who the perpetrators were was essentially being hidden from the public. And so uh, Musk uh, on Twitter decided to go ahead and start broadcasting all, all of the riots and all of the street demonstrations and so forth of people expressing their uh, dissatisfaction with the way the, the narrative was being told by British media and by the British government. And that's what, that's what he got in trouble for. And he's not the only one. Just recently, the, the owner of uh, Telegram in France got arrested, and uh, he's in detention right now. And he did essentially the same thing uh, that uh, Musk is doing, that is not kowtowing to the government uh, propaganda uh, censorship uh, efforts uh, on uh, as far as France is concerned, so that they decided that he was broadcasting uh, things they didn't like, and therefore we're going to arrest him, take him out of circulation. We'll see see where that goes. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's just a, a bald faced, bare faced, brazen attempt to jail and imprison those of you, those in the media who don't follow the party line, hook line, and sinker. Yeah, it's just another way for them to kind of put the screws onto people, right? Yeah. And to, to kind of borrow a phrase from uh, Mr. Churchill, you know, it seems like a, an iron curtain is descending across the land over there in Europe again. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. It, it, it really does. Yeah, no, it's, it's one in this, in this approach. Yeah. But, you know, oddly enough, when they, when they need someone like Elon Musk, they will have no trouble turning to him. You know, as we know, the start of the, what is it, uh, <laughs> oh God! What is Boeing? Boeing, thing? Boeing messed up with their uh, with their uh, saddle their saddle their rocket shuttle to the space station. Yeah, there's there's what is it doesn't work or whatever they're called whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's stuck there. It's got it's leaking fuel. They're not entirely sure it can. Thrusters aren't really working. They're afraid, they're afraid to put the astronauts on it because they might burn up on on reentry. That's that's the basic uh, nuts and bolts of it. And NASA doesn't want to be, uh, have, you know, have that kind of egg on their face and they can't trust Boeing for obvious reasons. I mean, airplanes, airplane doors falling off and, you know, Boeing has a whole lot of problems when they decided to uh, listen to the bean counters rather than the engineers, uh, when, it, you know, in, in the management of the company. And, and that's what's happened to Boeing. But yeah. And, and now guess who they're asking to pick up those two stranded astronauts. Yeah, they're going to have to wait for Elon Musk to do it, but they're going to do it in like January or something. It's insane how long these these two poor astronauts. Well, uh, are going to yeah, I mean, it, it, take, it takes some time and planning and so forth to, to get spaceships off the ground. You can't just go into your garage and start up the old spaceship and, and take off. That's not the way it works. But so, I mean, the, the time lapse is understandable. But what's but not understandable is why they trust Boeing in the first place. But the question is, don't. Shouldn't they have a plan, an emergency plan? Hey, you got some people stuck up there. We've got to get them down. You know. Well, I mean, have... seriously, there's no, there's no rush to get them down. There's, there's two astronauts up there. There's like half a dozen other astronauts that are that were already there, and they got plenty of provisions. So that's, you know, the time, time is not really a, an issue there. Uh, but this, but NASA in their hiring of of Boeing to get people up there, they they made a serious effort, or a serious mistake. Yeah, I guess at the time when you signed the contract with Boeing, it seemed like a good idea, but it ended up not being one. Yeah. Now, talk about some more non-bad ideas, <laughs> non-good ideas here. Um, 
California's governor decided to, let me see if I can get this one correct. They decided to not implement the ban on junk fees fully in restaurants, right? They're trying to ban junk fees, whatever the heck junk fees are. I want to see if I understand that correctly. Is that when they have a little screen where that says uh, that makes you a tip or, or they add a, a surcharge for uh, health insurance or something like that? A health insurance surcharge, a gas surcharge, yeah, you know, right. you know yeah. like when the gas prices shoot up, your UPS guy, sometimes you'll get a gas surcharge or something like that on your bill. Those type of things, right? Yeah. And so they're trying to get rid of junk fees, which, quite frankly, Richard, as we see here, let me see if I can get to it. It's it's <laughs> the government complaining, talking about junk fees. Oops, wrong button. The Sac State students are all a bit upset because uh, this is all messed up. Sac State is increasing fees. Okay. And I don't know if you've looked at any of your bills recently, your cell phone bill, your cable bill, whatever it is. It's full mm. of junk fees from the government. Oh, yeah. So how is the government sitting here telling us that they're banning junk fees when every time I pay anything to the government, I've got to pay two, three junk fees? Go pay your registration, right, on your car. It's not just the registration. You get all kinds of excess, excess, excess. Pay your property tax, and you've got a whole bunch of different assessments on there uh, that weren't on the on there when you bought the house. Yeah, the credit card use fee. The you know it's it's <laughs> these are all from the government, and so they're going. We're going to ban junk fees. I'm going, are you still? <laughs> I just, I couldn't help but laugh at it, Richard. Just yeah. because the, yeah. the, 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 the silliness of this thing. Of the well, government. it's just the old story of, you know, a, a politician never lost votes by uh, saying, I'm going to help you out. I was listening to a, uh, oh God, what was it? Uh, Board of Supervisors meeting the other day, uh, a couple weeks Boy, ago. Well, you have a lot more masochism than I do. Uh, well, that's part of my job, Richard. It's part no, of my job. I don't have yeah. a choice. So I'm listening to it, and they're talking about adding some fee. And here it is. Oh, it's just a couple bucks. It'll be fine. So, but, but wait a minute. Every year of my adult life, I have always heard, you know, oh, it's just a couple bucks. It'll be fine. It's just a couple bucks. It'll be fine. But from all these boards, from all these levels of government, from it's not just a couple of bucks anymore. That's why life is so freaking expensive. Well, you know, I'm old enough to remember Senator Everett Druxen, who said a billion here and a billion there. And pretty soon you're talking about real money. Yeah. Well, and we're at what? How many? Thirty four trillion, thirty five trillion dollars in debt now. Thirty five now. Yeah. Where we're spending as much on uh, debt service as we are in the military budget. It, Nearly, yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's become completely insane. And part of the reason why this happens, Richard, we got one last the one last topic here. Democrats in the media are reinventing history. Congress and the courts, they're essentially telling people one thing, right? You go, this is nothing new to us. We pay attention to this all the time, right? The campaign is moderates, centrists, and whatnot, but then the governors as progressives. It essentially, is what Democrats are doing this time. This is nothing new for us. But the act, someone actually, they actually brought this up, Richard. It's actually someone actually wrote an article about this thing on the Hill. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, this was particularly obvious in the in the uh, the the uh, Kamala Harris campaign. Now, she she's not given an interview since she was coronated. I don't I say coronated because it wasn't nominated. She didn't receive any votes whatsoever to get nominated. But she was coronated by the party elders, by the, the elites that control the Democratic Party. She is not giving given any any interviews of any significance since her coronation. And uh, she is now trying with all her heart to present herself as a moderate, almost libertarian. You know, all this talk about freedom uh, and all of this talk about crossing the aisle and being moderate. She was the most left or one of the most left wing senators there was when she was a senator. She was to the left of Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren on a lot of different uh, issues. But now, no, I don't think so. She's, you know, she's made a flip flop. Will she will that flip flop continue once she's in office? Place your bet. Take your chance. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've heard, heard all day, Richard. The flip flop going to continue. 
They are what they are. We know this. Biden ran as a as a centrist. I'll be a centrist. I'll govern for everybody. And it's one of the most far left administrations, at least in my lifetime. It's farther left than Barack Obama's was, which doesn't really surprise me when you know who who Joe Biden really is. Yeah. But but why do so many people buy into this thing, Richard? You've been around longer than me. People are. Uh... Well, there, there's two reasons. One is has to do with public choice theory. And public choice theory essentially says that the people who really care about government policy, big business that has lots of government contracts or is subject to uh, a lot of government regulation, they have a huge interest in making sure that government doesn't step on their toes. And so they have populated K Street with that's the, the street where all the lobbyists have offices. They've populated K Street with thousands of lobbyists, probably uh, three or four lobbyists for every sitting uh, congressman. And they make their voice heard loud and clear, not only through testifying in congressional committees and uh, buttonholing their congressmen in the lobby, that's where the, the term came from, but also through huge campaign contributions. If you're running for office, at the federal level, and you don't have a couple of uh, industrial lobbyists behind you with their campaign contributions, good luck. You're not, you know, your opponent will. And, it's, you know, money talks. Money is the mother's milk of politics. So that that's one side of it. And then the other side is the average citizen has essentially no interest or very little interest in a bill that will mean uh, – millions of dollars of revenue for, let's say, you know, General Motors, because they uh, make them uh, add some feature to the car that they can then mark up and turn it turn into, into millions of dollars worth of extra revenue, when it's only going to cost them 50 cents. So you don't have you don't have the uh, you don't have the, the, the incentive to go to, you know, to go to Congress, your, your congressman to fight over a, a 50 cent tax increase or a marginal tax increase or, uh, you know, a, a, a marginally annoying new regulation. You just don't have it's just not worth the effort, not worth the time to to make your, your voice heard. So the people who speak the loudest are the people who have the most at stake. The people who don't speak at all are most of us. Well, you also don't have the time, Richard. You don't have yeah, to. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Which yeah. level of government are you going to interface with? Right? Yeah, exactly. Your, your local board of supervisors, your your water board, your school board, yeah. uh, the state, some state level board, or the feds, yeah. right? Yeah. And you as an individual, you're pointless against all that. And we are out of time. Thank you for being with me this week, Richard. Thank you for watching. Please remember to no, right, well, have a good night. And please remember to love everybody. Thank you, James. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint.